Hi everyone, I'm about to start editing um, a new video, so this is the Hurricane Ian video, which you probably got because you've clicked on the link. Um, so just to say this video before I start is basically just going to be like random footage of what we got up to over a couple of days. So once I edit the video, I'll give you kind of like the things that I wish I had known before it and like some of the stuff like um, as to how it went, what we done, all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, here's some footage of what we got up to and some of the wins and stuff like that and we'll speak to you at the end. Hurricane! Yay! We put all our stuff inside. This is all the cool stuff. This is a bond inside. Sad times. And now we're playing pool. You can see the wind like just blowing the top of the hang. Like the netting moving, the trees are going like, but it's actually a bit calmer than it was earlier. Just looking up the street. Just windy, rainy. It's a better, better view of the street. Followed the sensible guidance and filled the bath. And uh, we never got well, we got food and we got water and all that sort of stuff, so just wait it out. Yeah, that's more like the hurricane. It literally changes every few minutes. Playing pool, passing time. Kind of a layer on, wind's picking up, <laughs> definitely got more rainy, um, and there's a lot of debris now. We've also had the power cut, but it came back on really quick. This is the back of the house. Trees are blowing it. I don't think the camera's really picking it up. Yeah. Oh, you can feel it hit the, the garage. It is proper hurricane weather now. I'll be surprised if the street's going across the road still. Up when we when we get up the motor. So after the hurricane, it's been the next day. Lana is damaged. That pool's really full. Lots of stuff lying about. The front's even worse. There's tiles of the roof. There's a leak in the house, but 
most importantly, we are all safe. Um, we are going to venture out because the wind has now stopped. It's been a few hours and try find food because we're hungry. So, yes, but we made it. We survived. There's lots of pool, lots of TV, lots of food, some snacks. So, let's see what's outside. So, out the front, damage. The garage door got damaged. There's broken glass and all of that bit, and that was all blown in. Streets all damaged. Car's fine. The roof's got a chunk of tiles missing and um, just rubbish all up and down the street. So, yes, stuff everywhere, but we've made it. We've survived. So I've just finished editing the video. Um, I made a few notes of things that I would talk about just to, to finish off the video and kind of give an idea, I guess, things I wish I knew and things that I noticed during the hurricane. Um, so probably the first thing to say is we were very lucky. Like where we were, like you know, we were safe the whole way through. Like when we didn't realise the damage that was going on at the time of the hurricane, but then when you see it afterwards, the, the you know it was a devastating hurricane. Um, it led to lots of damage. So that's probably the first thing to say. And most importantly for us is the fact that we were all absolutely fine. Um, I think the what I would say is you know damage to the property so in the surrounding area so as you saw in the video leaking roof damaged lanai and um, the garage got blown in there was like a crack on the side of the building and stuff like that but largely speaking we were fine and the villa that we were staying in didn't didn't have anything that particularly affected us for the rest of the, the holiday <coughs> When we went out through the surrounding area, we were in the Kissimmee area or Four Corners and when you look at the damage that was there, it just was like your luck as to how badly flooded and stuff things got. We were literally, I think probably about 500 metres just up the road, the next street up. Their um, entrance road was probably at least two foot deep in water. Somebody had tried to drive through it, their car got stuck and that was them. Um, we we were there the rest another what, week after the hurricane or over a week and that road was still flooded to some degree so it literally just shows you how lucky we got. Um, at the end of the video, as I said, we were going out to try and find food. We went uh, along the 192 and there was parts of the 192 that were really, really badly flooded. So yeah, very lucky in terms of the damage that was around us and actually just the, the devastation everywhere else. Um, so what I'd say that I learned that I now wish I knew was prep. Like we, I felt like we were quite organised in the sense that, you know, we'd done the stuff like filled the bathtub as you saw. We had plenty of bottled water. Um, what we didn't do very well is we thought it was going to be one day. Like when we were first hearing about our news, it sounded like it was going to be one day, um, and it meant that we didn't buy enough food. And by the time we bought the food, it was too late to get anything that was like you could use. Um, we were trying to be really sensible in the sense the fact that we were not buying stuff that needs to be cooked because we were told that you know we would likely lose power and all that sort of stuff which other than about 10 seconds we didn't lose power at all and uh, what we did lose was the internet which is one of the reasons why we didn't know how bad it was at the time we we're getting loads of messages from you know messages from friends and family wondering how we are but we had no way of replying because we had no internet and the 4, 4g phone signal wasn't working either where we were and um, so yeah i'd say prep i'll put in a picture of our typical meal uh, just now but basically as you can see we had um, bought two pizzas frozen pizzas which were cooked on the Wednesday morning um, so essentially we had one slice of pizza per day and we had uh, bought those little tortilla wraps so we were making quesadillas but as we had enough to make two per day per person so it was very much like rationed food and living off um, crisps and oreos and you know just the rubbish that was lying around so yeah that was probably the worst part and the hardest part for us is we hadn't prepped enough in terms of food hindsight we should have bought a big bag of pasta bought some sauce cooked it up on the wednesday and then if the power went out we had sauce, uh, pasta that you could eat cold yeah so next thing is like what it was like so i tried to put some footage in the video but it was dark when it hit us worst so the 
Hurricane started roughly at, or hit us roughly about 2 o'clock. I'd made landfall before, so it's 2 o'clock on the Wednesday. The wind started to pick up, so that was some of the early shots where you see the trees going and, and things like that. Um, then probably about like 10, 11 o'clock at night is when it started to get like a lot more serious, which I tried to film in the dark. Uh, you couldn't really like see how ferocious it was, but the winds were somewhere in the region of about 130, 140 mile an hour, so it was quite you know, strong winds, even when it had, had hit us. Um, lots of rain, you know, when you, it, it literally is like a curtain of water coming at you. Uh, so yeah, lots of rain, lots of uh, wind. The things that I think that make it hard is also we're staying somewhere we don't know, so it's like you're in a house that you're not sure like how it sounds, what the noises are like and so on. And as you can see in the video, it was the, the front of the house was what was getting hit with the wind. So the garage in the very front bedroom, which was Michelle's bedroom, was getting absolutely blasted all through the night. Um, and there was trees outside which just kept hitting the window. So yeah, Michelle definitely had the, the worst room, I think, for uh, sleeping during the night. And um, the other thing that makes it really like hard and it kind of, I don't know, it, it, like, it makes it quite intense is that they have an alarm system. So when your phone, even when your phone's on mute, this alarm system still goes off and it's like flood warnings, uh, tornado warnings, wind warnings, you were know, getting all these these warnings. Um, so it's fine during the day, like you're a bit, it's irritating, but obviously it's there for a reason. But when that happens at three o'clock in the morning, you woke up by it, it goes off twice because I was getting the notification in Spanish and in English and then Avon would get it as well. So like four notifications in the space of a few minutes you're woken up, the winds are blowing over the house at, let's just say, you know, 100, over, well over 100 miles an hour. Um, it, that makes it really hard to like, get back to sleep and, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's probably the worst part of it, is like just the noises and how loud it is. <clears throat> the, I don't know if these are myths or not, but apparently things like you can't open your windows in your house or your door um, when it goes off because the pressure change can be like damage the, the house blow out windows and all that sort of stuff which makes sense at that, that sort of speed. Yeah the, the other thing which um, happens is they put a curfew in place so again also we had no internet and all that sort of stuff on the second day because the internet went out during the night um, but when the the curfews in place like we couldn't leave the house so we were, the radio and stuff was telling us that we had to be home no earlier than two o'clock on the Wednesday which we didn't go out on the Wednesday anyway um, it was like essential travel only um, and then I think it lasted till about five o'clock the next day because we went out like the, the footage where you see us going out was after five um, so you're talking just over 24 hours where we were, were told to not leave the house obviously the fact that our internet was cut off meant that we couldn't get these updates the, the, the villa tv was all internet based there was no like cable tv or, or the, you know anything like that no terrestrial channels so we again had no way of getting news and, and knowing what was going on until we went out and we started to get 4g signal and we were able to you know go on the internet text people let them know we're safe all that sort of stuff so yeah that's that's it, like, you know, of the, the end of the video, just such a crazy experience. It obviously ate up two days of our holiday, but it's one of those, we knew we were going during hurricane season, you know you're taking the risk. I still, the way I was looking at it, I'm still in Florida, um, and we were all safe in the end, which is, is probably the most important thing. It wouldn't stop me going back. You know, there's I've seen people say that they wouldn't go back after it and all that sort of stuff. It wouldn't stop me going back. I think it's, um, I think I would just be better prepared next time if it ever was to happen again. So yeah, so I'll leave you with this uh, final image, which was uh, one which we saw when we were out driving about, um, and the locals' response to Hurricane Ian. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.